most of the fundamental ideas of science are essentially simple and may as a whole be expressed in a language comprehensible to everyone. Albert Einstein spent the early part of his career struggling in obscurity, but he persevered. By age 26, he published his special theory of relativity. Soon other breakthroughs followed. He went on to become not only the most acclaimed scientist of the 20th century, but perhaps one of the most famous personalities in modern history. He sought to explore the innate beauty and mystery of life. And his ideas changed the world. Albert Einstein was born in 1879 in the small town of Ulm in southern Germany. His family was Jewish. His father, Hermann, was an engineer. His mother, Pauline, a pianist. At his parents' urging, at the young age of six, he took up the violin. He would play the instrument for the rest of his life. This was the era of the late 19th century, a time of invention and innovation. Thomas Edison had just created the electric light bulb, and throughout the world, oil lamps were giving way to newfangled electric street lights and house lamps. Capitalizing on this booming industry, in 1880, Hermann Einstein opened an electric supply store in Munich. Later, he moved his business and his family to Milan. He sent his son, Albert, to study at an elite secondary school in Switzerland. It was his hope that the boy would become an electrical engineer and continue in the family trade. But Albert had other plans. As a teenager, he already had his sights set on studying physics. If I were to have the good fortune to pass my examinations, I would go to Zurich. I would stay there for four years in order to study mathematics and physics. I imagine myself becoming a teacher in those branches of the natural sciences, choosing the theoretical part of them. However, his father denied Albert's ambitions to be a teacher. Think, Albert. This is a good business I have. One day it will all be yours. Papa, you don't understand. Everything that is really great and inspiring is created by the individual who can labor in freedom. You force me to go into this business and you will take away that freedom. Forever! Physics is no profession for a son of mine. If I cannot study what I am interested in, then life is not worth living! And so, at age 17, Albert Einstein entered the Swiss Institute of Technology in Zurich. He began his studies working towards a degree as a teacher of mathematics and physics, just as he'd originally planned. Albert was intrigued by mysteries of light, he often cut classes, preferring to conduct his own light experiments in the laboratory. He would spend long hours in the library or cafe, reading about theories of light and physics. It was clear to me that light behaved strangely, in ways that contradicted everyday experience. Scientists had been studying the properties of light for years. They'd already measured its speed, denoted by the letter C in their equations. They found that light traveled at a rate of 300 million meters per second, equivalent to circling the world seven times in just one second. Scientists had also discovered another unique property of light, that its speed is constant. The speed of light can be slowed down when obstructed by materials such as water, glass, or a diamond. When scientists talk about the constant speed of light, they are referring to an unobstructed light source. The speed of light remains constant. This would seem to contradict logic, no? One must ask, how is this possible, when observations of simple mechanics in everyday situations yield very different results? Albert was referring to a basic principle of physics, the common rule of velocity additions. To see this in action, Let's look at a person jogging on a cruise ship. The person jogs in the same direction the ship is moving. Therefore, his velocity, as measured by an observer on the shore, would be equal to the ship's velocity, plus his own running velocity. This is the common rule of velocity additions. This principle applies to most everyday situations we observe, but it doesn't apply to light. 
Measurements indicate that the speed of light is not affected by the movement of the light source. We can see this same phenomenon in the night sky. A comet, like Halley's Comet, races through space and approaches the Earth at a speed of 50,000 meters per second. Using the common rule of velocity additions, the measured speed of light projected from Halley's Comet should be equal to the comet's velocity, 50,000 meters per second, plus the velocity of light, 300 million meters per second. However, when measured from Earth, the speed of light from the comet remains a constant 300 million meters per second, as if the comet were not moving. This discovery intrigued investigators, but no more so than the mystery of how light traveled. In the 19th century, scientists thought light was a type of wave. Waves need a medium for transmission. Ocean waves are transmitted by water. Sound waves are transmitted by air. So what was the substance through which light was transmitted? Scientists chose to designate this medium ether, which in this context means an invisible vapor. The Earth was thought to move in a sea of ether that was uniformly distributed throughout the universe. I was interested in the concept of ether. While studying at the Swiss Institute, I set out to prove its existence. Using the Institute's physics lab, I started an experiment. I thought to myself, this mysterious substance ether, it is supposed to be all around us. If I could use a vacuum pump to pump out all the air and ether from this glass jar, then light would not be able to pass through and the jar would cease to be transparent. Einstein spent weeks testing his theory, working his vacuum pump, trying to remove all the ether from inside the glass jar. Finally, It has been weeks. I have pumped almost all of the air and ether out of this jar and still it is transparent. Perhaps if I try pumping just once more... Oh my God! Ah, it's back to the drawing board. Where is the drawing board? Hmm. Could it be ether does not exist? For young Einstein, exploding glass jars were but a harbinger of tougher times to come. Times that would test his resolve and threaten his ambitions for a career in math and physics. In the years to come, it would be Einstein's persistence and belief in himself that would ultimately win the day and alter the course of history. After four years of study, at the age of 21, Einstein graduated from the Swiss Institute. Just as his father had warned, he had a hard time finding a job. Many of his professors thought him lazy. Many resented his independent streak. Thus, Einstein's recommendations were few and far between, and for two years, he searched but found no permanent employment. Making matters worse, his father fell ill and the family business was in danger of failing. Finally, in 1902, Einstein's two years of struggle came to an end when he landed a civil service job at the patent office in Bern. It was not very prestigious. I was appointed to patent examiner third class. But it was real money, and I had good reason for wanting to secure my financial affairs. His good reason was Maleva Marek, a classmate from the Swiss Institute. She, too, was a physicist, the only female student in her class. As a woman in a man's world, she was a pioneer. Albert and Maleva's youthful love letters reflect some of their early happiness. I just received your second letter, and I am very happy immeasurably happy. I can't wait until you come at the end of the week. Until then, I'll work very hard so that I'm free to enjoy our time together. Darling, when I thought of you last night, my pillow caught fire. Ah! Maleva and Albert married and in 1904 had their first